Well, you might have started attending your ward postings and in ward postings, what does the medical student do? He takes a history and this history is to be presented to the doctor or else in your YY exams, you need to take a history of a patient and on that your YY is conducted. So by this, we get to know that taking history is a very important task, not just to clear exams, but to reach a diagnosis of a patient. After a few years when we will become a doctor, then this history will help us to treat patients and that is how we will also earn. So history ticking is a very important thing and basically it is an art. Just like how a police interrogates a thief and how a journalist interviews every famous personnel, just like them, we doctors have to interview or take a history of a patient so that we can help him. So. How do we take a proper history so that we can clear our vivas, we can ace our exams and also we can take a proper history which helps us in future. So all these points are covered in this video. So let's get started. So before we get into the video, please make sure you like and share this video and also subscribe to this channel because a lot of content related to the clinical postings will be coming up. Whichever ward I am posted in, I'll make sure that I present to you awesome cases which I have come across. What are the common cases which can be asked in your exams? Also, which instruments are asked and how do you tackle ward postings? So all these videos will be coming up. So stay tuned. So let's get into the history taking part. So first of all, while history taking, we should first focus on the general information. Now, what is the general information? What is the name of the unit? What is the name of the ward you are posted in? And what is the date of admission of the patient and who is informant? Say for example, I am posted in surgery unit C. So I'll write it here. Name of the ward, male surgery ward 1 or female surgery ward 1. Date of admission of the patient and who is the informant? And in terms of informant, it can be either patient or the relative. But mention the relation of the relative and it's his or her name. Next comes the bio data of the patient. In bio data, what you shall mention is the name of the patient, the age of the patient, the sex of the patient, the religion, marital status, occupation, residence and income of the patient. With the income of the patient, you can classify the person on the basis of modified Kuppu Swami scale into a socio-economic status. But if you do not know it properly, then avoid it to emphasize in vivas. Now, how do we present this bio data in a formal way? First of all, you should always present your case in a proper English and in a proper format. So what is the format to present the bio data? Good morning. I am presenting a case of dash years old, married or unmarried, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, whichever religion it is. What is the gender of the patient? He is a resident of which area and what is his occupation? And what is his monthly income and he's presented to what is the name of the hospital you are uh, studying in and at the end what is the date of admission so how will you say i'll present it to you with an example good morning i am presenting a case of 53 years old married hindu male resident of vadodara or laborer by occupation with a monthly income of fifteen thousand per month presented to gmers medical college hospital on 6th December 2025 with the chief complaints of. So this is how you shall present your bio data. Now what are the viva questions which are possible from the bio data part? Well, it basically is the significance of each and every information you asked in the bio data. Say for example, you ask name and what does name do? It helps us to build a reputation, to keep a record in the database of the hospital and identification of the patient. Age whether it is a congenital disease then it will present by birth and acquired disease till uh, from the birth to the patient dies the patient can acquire any acquired disease and it also helps us to find which drug is suitable according to the age of the patient what is the drug dose we shall give and we can also choose the type of treatment next Based on the gender of the patient, religion, residence, occupation, there are many diseases which are prevalent to a certain age group, certain areas, endemic diseases and certain occupation. So you should know them. And what is the relation of these information to your case, which you also should know. And for that, you need to read the clinical books, which are 
रिलेटेड टू योर डिपार्टमेंट सपोज एस दास फॉर सर्जरी पी जे मेहता फॉर मेडिसिन सो यू शुड रिफर टू दीज बुक्स एंड एट दी एंड मराइटल स्टेटस वाई इज इट इम्पॉर्टेंट रिस्क ऑफ एस टी डी इंक्रीज इज इफ देर इज अ मैरिड कपल एंड कंसेंट फ्रॉम द पार्टनर इज ऑल्सो वेरी एसेंशियल ड्यूरिंग सर्जरीज इनकम एज आई टोल्ड सोशो इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस एंड इफ यू नो द सोशो इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस देन यू कैन हेल्प टू चूज अ ट्रीटमेंट मोडेलिटी विच इज अफोर्डेबल टू दी पेशेंट so this was related to the bio data now the next part is chief complaints in chief complaints you should mention the complaint which brought the patient to the opd now a patient will have multiple complaints but only one complaint will compel the patient or force the patient to present to you to the opd say for example a patient has high fever since one or two days and diarrhea for six days and that high fever has brought the patient to the opd and always you should mention one or two chief complaints and that to arranged in a clinical order a uh, chronological order that is vomiting since two days and diarrhea since one week so the recent complaints is before and the past complaints is a little later next odp that is origin duration and progression of a disease this is the very important part and a majority of your history is dependent on this part here it is also known as hopi that is history of presenting illness here you have to elaborate what is the patient story and you have to write it in the patient's language and how did the patient develop this disease and so for that you have to elaborate all the chief complaints and also mention the associated complaints and for that i have come across a very good mnemonic which i learned in my second year posting that is socrates first of all mention the site of what is the symptom the onset character relieving factors aggravating factors time duration since the symptom is occurring what is the extent that either it is progressing to a certain other the organ then what is the severity of the disease and at the end what are the associated symptoms so for this you should read what is the symptomatology which is given in the clinical books very well and what will the odp help us to it will help us to reach whether it is a multi systemic disease or it is a single system disease next how do we present this as we uh, saw earlier that here we ended upon with the chief complaints of then you mention the chief complaints which are one or two and then at the end you will say on elaborate el- elaborating the origin duration and progression the patient was symptomatically well here you will first write the oldest complaint date and then after dash days after which he developed what is was the first complaint that is the oldest complaint so this is how you will present the od now maximum viva questions can be possible from the odp section because obviously this is the main section so for that you should read the clinical books because here you will also get to know what are the questions you need to ask in a particular case next go system wise that is first of all if a complaint is related to git then rule out all the git causes ask for all the complaints and ask only the significant questions that is what is related to the disease now in case of a constipating patient you do not ask diarrhea so you should know such points next negative complaints negative complaints is also a very important part because it will help you to rule out a disease from a multiple system spectrum to a single uh, system spectrum so this is the most important part and here you will rule out all the other causes except your disease so you have to put a clinical scenario in the mind of the doctor so that he can understand which disease are you want wanting him to understand so here you have to include what is not present and you have to eliminate it for this you should study the clinical books and so that you can get a overview of it but if you are in a second year of mbbs then you might not know diseases very well because you have just started studying pathology so do not worry at least know what are the causes of the disease which is involved and what are the different causes and rule out all the causes and what are the questions you can ask that much you shall know 
and sometimes negative history is a part of the odp so some uh, doctors want the odp to have the negative history and some want it separate so write it accordingly next past history in past history you shall ask for any past hospital admission and for any illness not just this disease but any illness and if yes then which hospital he was administered what was the reason that is what is the illness and how much duration next is was there any surgery and does it have any prevalence to our disease next is presence of diabetes hypertension tuberculosis jaundice ischemic heart disease thyroid disorders and at the end history of blood transfusion these are certain complaints which you have to ask compulsorily next is the family history in family history same we have to ask for the history of diabetes hypertension tuberculosis ischemic heart disease and any genetic disease in the family because these play a significant role and they are and they can be transmitted genetically so we shall ask for this history at the end you shall end with personal history that is diet of the patient vegetarian or non vegetarian appetite bowel habits that is either he is suffering from constipation diarrhea and how many days and what is the normal frequency the patient has next bladder habits you shall ask for what is the frequency how much time the patient goes to urinate either he is facing urgency or either he is he has complaints of burning menstruation next does he have a sound sleep and what is the duration or how much hours he is sleeping then if any addiction history addiction history you have to ask the patient very what do we mean by like you have to be stiff with the patient and you shall ask this very strictly because sometimes patient are not telling the addiction history because we are medical students so they do not trust us so what is the thing they are addicted to it and how many years and what is the quality they are consuming and how much in a day at the end what is the drug history if he has any disease and which drug he is taking and at the end does he have any allergy now in case of women we shall ask the menstrual history number of children live and dead we have to include both and what is the reason for the dead children whether it was a normal vaginal delivery or a c section was performed and in case of children we shall know the immunization of history and type of marriage the pa- uh, the patient's parent have undergone that is whether it is a consanguineous marriage or a non consanguineous marriage because consanguineous marriage have increased incidence of genetic diseases so you shall know all this uh, is what you need to ask in a history so at the end what are the possible viva questions first of all why did you ask for these complaints and what do they conclude so this is related to the negative history as i told that why are you ruling out these complaints because we need to reach to a single spectrum of the disease next what is the significance of the past hospital admission the disease might have reoccurred in certain patients and further we can choose the treatment modality because if the disease same disease is reoccurring and we need to manage it aggressively next what is the significance of diabetes hypertension and ischemic heart disease genetically prevalent disease these diseases are only cured when the patient dies we can only treat them but we cannot cure them so this is a very important thing which we shall ask in all the histories and a lot of precaution is treat required while surgery or while treatment management while choosing drugs So yes we need to ask this in all the patients. Next, what is the significance of TB and jaundice? TB is a multi system disease and which can reactivate. And reactivation occurs when the patient is under immunosuppression and why do we give immunosuppressants for transplantation? So we shall take care of the history whether the patient has past TB or current TB. If he has he is an active case then we need to take care that he does not spread the same disease to the other patients in the ward and at the same time we have to make sure that he takes his tb medicines regularly and complete the course jaundice indicates a chronic liver disease and liver is a very important organ for metabolism of drugs the certain drugs require the metabolism to act and certain drugs can worsen the further metabolism so yes we shall take care of this and at the end if a patient is hepatitis b positive or hepatitis c positive and we have to be careful while treating the patient also the staff which is working around should also be careful because a needle stick injury can lead to the zero conversion 
of ours that we can get, uh, get hepatitis B and hepatitis C. So I'll uh, request you all to get vaccinated for hepatitis B before you start your ward posting because, because you do not know when you'll get a needle stick injury. So yes, you shall know this. And also I forgot one point that is decreased clotting factor synthesis. Liver secretes to 79 and 10 clotting factors if I'm right. And these factors, if are absent, then they can lead to excessive bleeding during surgeries. So these are the possible viva questions. What are the points you need to take care while your history taking? And I guess this shall help. you. Now, a lot of uh, students struggle with history taking. And why do they struggle? Because they do not take histories. Well, you might feel that this is boring. But if you will take a history for five to six times, then I can promise you that Yes, you will be able to take a very good history and that too, you can learn it very quickly. You'll know where the patient is trying to hide something or what will the next symptom be. So yes, you shall prioritize history taking as per your second year. And since third year, you can start thinking like a doctor uh, while managing the patient or while taking the history, you can reach a proper diagnosis. And at the end, you should end the history taking with the provisional diagnosis. Based on whatever the summary of the history is there, you shall you can come to a provisional diagnosis. So this shall help you. And at the end, you should like and share this video and comment down if you have any doubts. And please check the description for this PDF and subscribe to the channel.